Hi, my name is Brianna, and welcome to my reaction commentary channel. Today we're going to be reacting to Season 1, Episode 3 of Hannibal. Now I'm super excited to find out what my guys, Will, Jack, and Lecter are up to, as well as my girls, Abigail and Alana. But before we get into it, if you could do me a quick favor, please like, subscribe, ring that bell for post notifications, follow me on all my social media, that way we can skip the chit chat and get straight to the good part. What's up, Abigail? Now what's up to you, Mr. Hobbs, you weirdo? The look on her face, I feel like Abigail's always known that her dad's a creep. You're so pretty. She is so pretty. Uh, please don't caress it. I read they're like the equivalent of a four-year-old human being. They care about each other. They care about their environment. And we're gonna honor every part of her. Her leg bones, we can carve into knives. None of her is gonna go to waste. Keep the blade pointed up. Damage the organs. You ruin the meat. Great. I don't know how I'm gonna feel about eating her after all this. <sighs> eating her is honoring her. Otherwise, it's, it's just murder. Okay, please don't. Can you not? Can we not? Can we not? With the caressing and the finger and the hair. <laughs> hey girl, welcome back to consciousness. <laughs> hey Will, how you doing? I'm compelled to go cover myself. You can, you don't, I mean, it's up to you. As long as you're comfortable. And Abigail Hobbs woke up. So who are we ignoring? Is he gonna keep calling? It's Crawford. Jack wants you to go see him. Of course he's gonna keep calling. I love that guy. Jack thinks Abigail was an accomplice to her father's crimes. Be helpful to you as a buffer? I, I, I like you as a buffer. I also like the fact that you rattle Jack. Are you a doctor? Not medicine. I'm a psychiatrist. I asked the nurses if my parents were dead and they wouldn't tell me. Oh yeah, girl, they're gone. I'm so sorry. Who buried them? They haven't been buried. Your mother was cremated per the instructions in her living will. Damn, that's rough. Your father is more complicated. Because he was crazy? I mean, he is crazy. The nurses said you didn't remember. I remember, I just didn't want to talk to them about it. I want to sell the house. I guess it's mine now. I can use the money for college, get an apartment. I know she's talking to like deflect from the serious issues, but she has a good head on her shoulders and she's making plans for the future. I respect your sympathy for her, Dr. Bloom. I hope one day you'll appreciate my lack of it. You really think Abigail Hobbs helped her father kill those girls? That's what we're trying to find out. How was she when you saw her? Surprisingly practical. Suspiciously practical? I would suggest she can be practical without being a murderer. She has a penchant for manipulation, withheld information to gain information. She demonstrated only enough emotions to prove she had them. You're beginning to appreciate my lack of sympathy. But also, I'm not seeing a problem, and I kind of like her. I want Will Graham to of talk to Of course you do. <laughs> Jack, not yet. That has never stopped him before. There was a ninth victim who also fit Abigail Hobbs's profile. But Garrett Jacob Hobbs didn't murder her. The killer who did wanted us to know he wasn't the Minnesota Shrike. Ooh, hold on. All my favorite people are in the same room. Yeah. Hey, Hannibal, does that look familiar? Never kill like this again. So how do we catch him? Before Garrett Jacob Hobbs murdered his wife and attempted to do the same to his daughter, he received an untraceable call I believe the as yet unidentified caller was our copycat killer. Let's get into it. I love that the person that Will is hunting is in the room. So you're not a doctor, a nurse, or a psychiatrist? I'm a journalist. Oh my gosh, this girl is everywhere. <laughs> She is like glitter and herpes. She just pops up and you can't get rid of her. Your mother wasn't the first person your father killed. He killed eight girls. Eight girls that looked just like a man named Will Graham. Works for the FBI, but isn't FBI. He catches insane men because he can think like them. 
we're all in the room together. Is this an episode where everyone's just in the room together? Because I love this. Put all the pieces together. Let's see what happens. Special Agent Will Graham. By special agent, he means not really an agent. He didn't get past the screening process. Too unstable. Fight her. But I really must insist you leave the room. If you want to talk. Hey, good job, Will. Get her out of here. This is Dr. Lecter. Hey, Dr. Lecter. Do you remember us? I remember you. You killed my dad. True. Also saved your life. He kept telling me he was sorry to just hold still. He was going to make it all go away. There was plenty wrong with your father, Abigail, but there's nothing wrong with mm, We don't know that, Will. We're jumping to conclusions. Slow it down. I'm worried about nightmares. We'll help you with the nightmares. So killing somebody, even if you have to do it, it feels that bad. If you're not a psychopath, yeah, girl. Mm -hmm. It's the ugliest thing in the world. Oh, Will. Don't talk about yourself and Lecter like that. Oh, look at them being weird. They're so cute. Please let me apologize for my behavior in there. It was sloppy. Girl, I don't want your apology. I really need you to just stop talking to me and about me and also to the people involved in my cases. I told her I was insane. I can undo that. How, Sway? You don't have the answers. I can undo what I said. I can also make it a lot worse. Girl, you like to make things a lot worse. It's your favorite thing to do. Not very smart to piss off a guy who thinks about killing people for a living. It isn't very smart to piss off a guy who thinks about killing people for a living. Gosh dang it. <laughs> Will, she set you up, bruh. You take her home, she may experience intense emotions, respond aggressively, or reenact some aspect of the traumatic event without even realizing it. Where do you weigh in on this, Doctor? What do you think, Lecter? There is a scenario where revisiting the trauma event could help Abigail heal and actually prevent denial. And we have a difference of opinion, therefore I'm going to choose the opinion. That best suits you? That best serves my agenda. Exactly. Crawford, I know who you are now. I see what you're doing. Thanks again for meeting with me. I know this hasn't been easy for you. This girl, do you ever sleep? Girl, get a different hobby. Go play the ukulele. My sister was impaled on a severed stag head. I just thought you should know Abigail Hobbs came out of her coma. Why would he need to know that? Why would the brother of the victim need to know about the daughter of the perpetrator and her medical condition? I mean, girl, you might want to have that taken off because, you know, property values and stuff. I mean, she was already thinking about selling the house. So you pretended to be my dad? And uh, people like your dad. What did it feel like to be him? Your dad knew he was out of time. Somebody told him we were coming. The man on the phone? It was a blocked call. Did you recognize his voice? I'd never heard it before. Dr. Lecter is in the perfect position because he's getting all of the like updated information every time that they discover a little bit something new. So he's like, you know what? I can just change my path as we learn more. You be my dad, he be my mom, and you be the man on the phone. Y'all are playing games on this episode? What are y'all doing? <laughs> Everybody on the block was on the news and everyone at school. My mom doesn't want me talking to you, much less the news. I don't think you did it. Who was watching? I do. Oh, shit. <laughs> this is private property. That has not stopped a single person from entering this property, ma'am. You lure them back to daddy for dinner? How'd you trap my sister? Did you chat her up? Hey, piss off! Thank you, supportive friend. Old man cut out my sister's lungs while she was still using... <laughs> Can y'all run a little faster? Marissa, come home. No, come home. Can you stop being such a bitch? Okay, don't be rude to your mom. She's just concerned because you are at the scene of a crime. Let's get back to the hotel. We'll go to the cabin tomorrow. We should report this, yes? Yes. Hannibal, you keep messing with crime scenes, sir. No person to waste. Otherwise, it was murder. He was feeding them to us. Wasn't he? Why didn't I think of that? 
it's very likely. Is that something that you do, Lecter? Girl, what in the world? What in the world, girl? The DRT at the Hobbs cabin. Again? Another girl and again with the antlers? understand that the friend was rude to her mom but i don't think she deserved that i think that's a little overboard abigail said he asked if she helped her dad take his sister's lungs while she was alive but garrett jacob hobbs didn't kill cassie boyle i know he knows you said that this copycat was an intelligent psychopath will that there would be no traceable motive no pattern he wouldn't kill again this way you said change all the time the sun comes up and the world still spins is he gonna use the blood on the rock to set up this boy i'm watching you lecter i'm always watching is she manipulating you will abigail hobbs is not a killer but she could be the target of one you killed my daughter abigail back here abigail what lecter you holding the grieving mother of the victim that you may or may not have had something to do with I'm just saying, I haven't seen it with my eyes that Lecter did it. Sloan. This girl, she's always on the wrong side of the police line. <laughs> what the fuck? He stopped pillows with these girls' hair? I'm not gonna hurt you. God, I just need you to listen to me. Is officers all these fbi agents and we can't set up a perimeter we can't secure a crime scene why are we failing what is going on okay uh hey abigail welcome to the club now you're out here with will and lecter because all of y'all are catching bodies and everyone's late and now everyone's dead. My God, Lecter, what the fuck is going on? She'll be all right. Abigail, show me what happened. Lecter, you never cease to amaze me. He was going to kill me. Was he? I mean, he was attacking her. It was a whole thing. This isn't self-defense, Abigail. You butchered him. I didn't. Didn't she just stab him one time? It's just a little poke. And they'll see you as an accessory to the crimes of your father. I mean, the perception is very, very bad right now in this situation. It does not look good. I can help you if you ask me to. You can tell them you were defending yourself when you gutted this man. And we can hide the body. Lecter is pulling all kinds of streaks. Okay, Lecter, you little puppet master. Maybe a blur out of the corner of my eye and then a big fat cut to black. Yeah, girl. Struck Dr. Lecter in the back of the head. Uh-huh. Lecter. Well, where's Abigail? Lecter took her back to the hotel. She scratched Nicholas Boyle on his way out the back door. The blood on her hands matches the tissue that we pulled from Marissa Shure's mouth. He put the blood from the rock in the girl's mouth to set him up, Lecter. You sneaky so-and-so. I like you. I, I hate you. And you're bad. It's a lot. I'm Will. <laughs> I have mixed emotions. Hello, Abigail. How did you know it was me? I'm like, hey, partner in crime? <laughs> I didn't honor any part of him, so it's just murder, isn't it? Most would argue self-defense. Then why not tell the truth? That would still be those who would say you were taking after your father. You're the one who called the house. Absolutely, girl. Let's let's go. Let's. I think who called the house is a serial killer. Just like my dad. She's not wrong. I'm nothing like your dad. I made a mistake. Something easily misconstrued, not unlike yourself. Everybody's trying to relate to people, but they're playing games and they're being fake and phony about it. And this is why I have trust issues. I'll keep your secret. 
And I'll keep yours. This is nothing short of a blood pact. <laughs> I'm stressed. Y'all are stressing me out. I'm stressed. All right, and that concludes episode three of Hannibal. And once again, another banger, another great episode, great storytelling. I really like this because I don't know where the show is going. Something I really love this episode is getting all the characters in the same room at the same time because I've already praised the scenes when we get Lecter, Will, or like Jack and Hannibal together in a room talking to each other. But this, this was great. Cause it was like, oh, hey Jack, Lecter, Alana, Abigail, Will, uh, Freddie Lowndes, the girl who's always everywhere. I will say the actress is doing a great job because every time I see her on my screen, I catch an attitude. After the first two episodes, I didn't think we could meet another character that was as traumatized as Will. But poor Abigail, her mom is killed by her dad. Her dad is then killed by Will, but not before he slit her throat. And then she gets out of the hospital just to find out that she's been eating his victims and that the pillows that he makes is full of his victim's hair. I like Jack. I think I'm better understanding Jack. I've always liked Will. Alana, she seems cool. But Dr. Lecter, my problem is I like him and he's smart, so I admire him. But he's out here killing and eating people and I can't get behind that. So now I'm stuck being like, that was a good move, but also that was horrible and terrible and awful. Everyone in this episode was so stressed. And like, after watching it, I'm stressed, but I'm like happy stressed. Everyone that recommended this show and everyone that's watching, thank you so much. I'm having a great time, and right now I just feel like we can only go up from here. I'm already excited about the next episode, so I want to thank you for watching. Please, on your way out, if you like, subscribe, ring that bell for post notifications, follow me on all my social media. That way I can see you next time with another one. Bye, y'all!